Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I am going to do your May the night just for today in a meditation. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let's get into that meditation. Today, I'm going to use a different format because the PDF file has an error in punctuation, okay? So hopefully you can see that. It is entitled, Write About It. Oh, here we go. Step work. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. All right, write about it. Okay, this is what it says. We sit down with a notebook, ask for guidance, pick up our pen, and start writing. <laughs> Basic text, page 29. All right. When we're confused or in pain, our sponsor sometimes tells us to write about it. Though we may groan as we drag out the notebook, we know that it will help. By laying it all out on paper, we give ourselves the chance to sort through what's bothering us. We know we can get to the bottom of our confusion and find out what's really causing our pain when we put the pen to the paper. Writing can be rewarding, especially when working through the steps. Many members maintain a daily journal simply thinking about the steps, pondering their meaning, and analyzing their effect is not sufficient for most of us. Excuse me. It's not sufficient for most of us. There's something about the physical action of writing that helps to fix the principles of recovery in our minds and hearts. This is such a deep topic, guys. I'm choking over it. <laughs> All right. The rewards we find through the simple action of writing are many. Clarity of thought, keys to locked places inside of us, and the voice of conscience are but a few. Writing helps us be more honest with ourselves. We sit down, quiet our thoughts, and listen to our hearts. What we hear in the stillness are the truths that we put down on paper. Just for today, one of the ways I can search for truth in recovery is to write. I will- Alert from updates available. My goodness. Turn that other computer down. Just for today, one of the ways I can search for truth and recovery is to write. I will write about my recovery today. <laughs> I feel like the lower destructive power is really trying not to let me talk about this topic. <laughs> Writing? Oh my goodness. I love to write. So here's the thing. I just don't enjoy writing on the steps anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I think that it's important for me to get that out the way and say that. I don't enjoy writing on the steps anymore, although I still do, and I think that they're very important. So if you thought this was going to be, let's build this topic up type of meditation, nope. Not today. <laughs> I was choking on every word. Technology is interrupting me. So I know that I need to talk about this, but I need to talk about it from a point of view of just where I'm at today. Just where I'm at today, because you probably more than likely will be able to identify with that. Now, if, if you're like me and you're sponsoring, that's your whole purpose, right? To be able to help people go through their steps. That's that's really what it's all about. All the other extra stuff <laughs> from the point of view of where are you on your steps? What principles apply? 
that's pretty much what I'm really interested in. I will do the other conversations, but I'm really trying to figure out where you're at with your step work and the spiritual principles of the program. Okay. So if you're sponsoring, that's that's usually your angle. <laughs> that's usually your angle. It's not going to the prom event and hanging out with 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 your whole network, right? But it's it's still cool, but that's not really what you've been employed by them to do. When I say employed, I mean in a general sense, right? They're inviting you into their life, asking you to do a particular thing, help them go through the steps. That's as a sponsor. Now, as a sponsee, that's what I want to talk about. Just write about it. It's easy to say. I don't believe it's easy to do. Literally, as I look around my office, okay, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. On one, no, 10, 11. On one shelf, there are 11 journals. And every last one of them I think except for this this beautiful one I just purchased. Every last one of them is filled to the brim, right? There's no extra pages. I may skip. I may skip if it, if I drop the ball a little bit and I'm coming back to journaling. I may skip a page and start fresh and date it. Okay, but generally speaking, just on one shelf and there's only like there's only six shelves. And two of them have decorations, right, in the middle. So 11, 11 journals on one shelf is a lot. I love to write. I don't want you to think that I don't. Now, if I look over at my husband's desk that he never uses, I have all of my fitness stuff over there, my hair products over there, <laughs> nothing to do with office, but I have another shelf that has nothing but Bibles and journals on that. And from this angle, I can see four journals over there and they are already full. Like I cannot put anything else in those. Okay. So I've get, that's 15 journals. I think that's a lot of journals just in one lifetime. Not to mention that these are all old, right? The ones that are more recent and important to me are directly behind where I'm sitting. Like they're protected by just my body, right? You can't really see them. There's two shelves. Well, there's two bookshelves back there that have tons of books and journals on them. And those are more current. And then I have the journal that I actually am writing in. And that's out on the couch. Okay. So I believe in writing. I believe in writing. However, if you were to ask me, where's your step writing journal? Like, where, where do you keep the work that you actually do? It's in the computer. I don't physically write that out anymore. Right. Because it seems like when I get to writing on the steps, it seems like there's this overflow. Like I cannot just get through a step and leave it. And my sponsor doesn't, she's not the type of person that goes through every question anyway, right? She'll, she'll get a feel for what's going on. And then a lot of times won't even look at the step working guide right? When she's talking to me, she'll get a feel for the spiritual principle and want to hear an updated version, not just what I wrote a month ago, but the updated version. And I trust her instincts. I'm totally cool with that. However, those occasions are few and far in between because of our schedule and our lives. So step writing is not the main type of writing that I do. And when I do it, I do not physically write with my hand, right? Manually write. I type because it allows me to do more, say more in a 
a lesser amount of time. Okay. And it helps me with my carpal tunnel, to be honest, right? I love the physical process of writing. I have a beautiful penmanship that I developed from just being a little girl, right? I love to write in cursive. I love a certain type of pen. I love the process of writing. I know how to do calligraphy, but my writing is, in my mind, more beautiful than calligraphy. Okay, so I it's an art to me. I love to write. Now, these journals don't reflect all of that because I can get quite sloppy, especially when I'm angry. Okay, so I, just so you know where Mighty Stream is on this topic about write about it. I love to write. I don't enjoy writing about the steps. Um, however, I do still do it and I think it's still very important. So if you are that person listening and you're you're feeling the same way, right? I don't I don't want to do this. I just want to say at least at least once get through the steps. At least once try to get 1 through 12. At least once in your lifetime. People sometimes brag about how often they go through the steps and they're still acting like jerks, right? Um, there should be proof in the way that you live of the work that you're doing. That's what's important. And it's about quality, not quantity. Don't ever get it in your mind that sharing I've been through the steps. Uh, let me see. You know, I'm giving you a, for instance, I'm not even going to tell you how many times I've been through them, several, right? But I can count them on two hands, right? So don't ever get it in your mind that sharing about how often you go through the steps is equivalent to gaining the respect of how well you treat people. It's not the same. How well you live your life. It's just a statement. I went through the steps eight times. Okay. But you're still, you're still sleeping with other people's husbands. You're still putting your hands on women. You're still whatever. Fill in the gap, right? Fill in the blank. it should bring about a change. And if it doesn't do that, there's no purpose in even sharing about how often you're going through them. It's not like a badge. It's not like stripes that you get in the military, right? It's not a medal. Of, it's, it's, it's just hopefully indicative of your experience in transformation. That's it. Now, let me speak really quickly because I know everyone is ready to move on to the next meditation. Let me speak really quickly about the benefit. And I guess I just said that, right? The benefit is that there should be change. However, as you're writing, you may start out, like I say, I start out in one place and then pages later, I'm still on the same question. <laughs> right? Because there's more revelation that is coming. And then when I actually get to the question that might hit on some of the stuff that I just wrote about, I will indicate C bullet number, whatever, right? I don't drag myself. If I've answered it in whatever I'm answering and I get to a question that is more detailed about that, I might expound, but a lot of times I will just write C bullet because I have all of that, okay? It's going to reveal yourself to you. And that's what this is about, self-discovery. Learning how you work, learning about your buttons, why those buttons are there, 
how your childhood experience, your religious experience, your educational experience, how all of these experiences throughout your life, your communal experience, your community, your neighborhood, all of that, how it is affecting you in the here and now and give you the tools you need to be able to recognize yourself when you see yourself coming and reposition yourself. Not be so reactive, but to have a clear, sober mind when you decide to act a certain way, take responsibility for your behavior, past and present. I've enjoyed talking to you today. I hope you have a beautiful day on purpose.